If you're a man who wants to naturally double or even triple your testosterone levels, then you're going to need to take the right supplements. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my top three supplements to boost your testosterone levels naturally. Supplements that are backed by numerous scientific studies and hundreds of case studies. Be sure to watch until the end because I'm also gonna show you some key diet hacks to get more testosterone boosting nutrition from your food. So in my coaching program, I show my clients that there are seven key micronutrients plus a few more supporting nutrients that all need to be in place for optimal testosterone production. If any of those nutrients are low, your testosterone levels won't be optimal. But the good news is that a nutrient-dense, whole food diet can give a man most of those nutrients. Now, I have to be very careful when I talk about supplements because nearly everyone wants to solve their health and their hormone problems with a pill. But the reality is that you could take all of the best supplements on the planet but still not see any results if your diet, your sleep, your general movement patterns, your strength training, or your sun exposure are all falling short. It's also very important to avoid taking too much of a supplement because you can end up with side effects like nutritional imbalances, sleep problems, energy problems, and even loose stools, just to name a few. So just keep in mind that you're actually better off taking too little of a supplement than taking too much. And you're better off getting your micronutrients from food as often as you possibly can. So with that said, the number one testosterone boosting supplement is magnesium. Magnesium levels directly correlate to your testosterone levels because it's responsible for both starting and completing the testosterone production cycles in the body. Numerous well-crafted scientific studies have shown repeatedly that men who are given a magnesium supplement have a significant testosterone increase. And in general, we burn through magnesium very quickly, especially if we're under stress, so it's one of the most important nutrients to supplement, and pretty much 95% of the world is magnesium deficient. Magnesium is also critical for hundreds, maybe even thousands of biological processes in our body, and it's difficult to get enough from food. So that's why it's the number one supplement for overall health and for great testosterone levels. Magnesium helps to lower cortisol, and that means it helps us deal with stress better, and that lower cortisol level also helps keep testosterone levels high. Magnesium helps with sleep, so taking some magnesium before bed can help you get deeper sleep, produce more testosterone while you're sleeping, and wake up feeling more refreshed. In fact, if you only wanted to take one supplement, I would recommend magnesium to be that one. But again, be mindful of your dose. Start small and work your way up because when you take too much magnesium, it's gonna give you loose stools. But that's pretty much the worst side effect of it. My number two testosterone boosting supplement is zinc. So zinc is just as important as magnesium for testosterone levels. And in fact, the old school bodybuilding supplement to increase your testosterone naturally was ZMA, which stands for zinc magnesium aspartate. But I don't recommend that version because it's bound to an aspartate molecule. Now, there are dozens of well-designed studies that show a direct correlation between your zinc status and testosterone levels. Whether they gave men zinc and saw their testosterone levels go up, or they deprived them of zinc and saw their testosterone levels go down, the conclusion was clear that zinc status does directly correlate to your testosterone levels. Now, don't go crazy with the zinc supplements, though, because there are a lot of good food sources for zinc, and oysters are probably the most famous one. Oysters have very good levels of bioavailable copper, and that copper is at a perfect ratio to the zinc. So that means that you won't create an imbalance to the zinc to copper ratio in your body if you eat oysters. But if you take too much of a zinc supplement, you absolutely can imbalance that zinc to copper ratio, which is just as bad as having too little zinc. Also, I don't recommend zinc supplements that have copper mixed in with them. So that copper is usually not very bioavailable or it's in way too high of a dose. So your best bet for copper is to get it from food sources. Now, the form of these supplements that you take matters a lot more than you might realize. So most of the magnesium and most of the zinc on the market are using the cheapest forms, and you definitely need to make sure you're avoiding those. For example, forms like magnesium oxide, magnesium citrate, and zinc gluconate all need to be avoided, but they're extremely common because they're super cheap. There are much better options for magnesium and zinc, but you'll find oxide, citrate, and gluconate forms used a lot because they're so cheap, but unfortunately, they're not very bioavailable, and they can even be toxic. 
So when you really understand how micronutrients work in the body, you get very picky about the compound that your supplements are bound to. Glycine is a much better substance for nutrients to be bound to than citric acid or gluconic acid. So I recommend using magnesium glycinate and zinc glycinate. Those are much better options than the citrate or the gluconate forms. My number three testosterone boosting supplement is vitamin K2. And this one surprises a lot of men, but K2, specifically the Mark IV, and the Mark 7 varieties are very important for helping the testes to make testosterone. So it's a key player in having great natural testosterone levels. But I need to warn you that K2 is a fat soluble vitamin. So you have to be very careful not to take too much. K2 actually builds up in the testicles. So don't go crazy with supplementing it. 500 to 600 micrograms, that's micrograms three to five days a week is plenty for most men. So please be careful with K2 supplementing because all fat soluble vitamins build up in our bodies. So you really need to go easy on the K2 and be very careful with all the other fat soluble vitamins like D3, vitamin A or vitamin E. In fact, I don't recommend supplementing A, D or E at all unless you really know what you're doing. D3 is especially difficult because the D3 hormone that your body produces from sun exposure is very different from the supplement version of D3 that you can buy. Instead of supplementing D3, what you really need is sensible sun exposure because D3 is actually a hormone that your body produces when you expose your skin to the sun. And the D3 molecule that your body produces is far more complex than the supplement version and it's more readily available to move from the storage form to the active form, and that's where it helps creating testosterone. K2 helps your body regulate D3 and calcium. So K2 directs calcium to the hard tissues and away from your soft tissues, whereas supplemental D3 actually increases your soft tissue uptake of calcium. And that means that D3 can lead to calcification of your endocrine glands and other soft tissues. Magnesium also directs calcium to the right tissues. So I recommend that you take magnesium, zinc, and K2, get plenty of sun for a few months, and then test to see where your D3 levels are instead of just taking large amounts of D3 like everyone tells you to. Now it's important to keep in mind that stress, eating an inflammatory diet, and being deficient in nutrients like K2 and magnesium will actually lower your D3 levels. So you wanna fix those issues before you supplement D3 and focus on getting your D3 from the sun as much as you can. Now you might be wondering why I'm not including famous testosterone boosting herbs like Tonkat Ali, Fidoja Agrestis, or something old school like Tribulus Terrestis. Well, I have a whole video about why testosterone boosting herbs aren't usually a good long-term solution. But the summary is that those herbs have mild to moderate levels of toxicity, so you have to cycle off of them unlike these foundational nutrients like magnesium, zinc, or K2. Also, most testosterone boosting herbs act like stimulants to your endocrine system, forcing it to make more testosterone. But if you don't have the micronutrients in place that your body needs, you'll end up crashing back down to where you were before you were taking the herbs, and you might even end up worse off. And so now, the bonus that I mentioned earlier is that you need to be eating a diet with a lot of high quality pasture raised meat, high quality eggs, and some organ meats, because you can't eat a low quality standard American diet and expect to fix all the toxicity and the lack of nutrients from that diet with supplements. It's just not gonna work. To put it another way, your supplements are only gonna be as effective as the food that you take them with. So if you're eating a carb heavy diet with lots of gluten, lectins, phytates, and other anti-nutrients, you're gonna block the uptake of the minerals that you're consuming. But when you take your supplements with meals that are high in quality protein, they're gonna be much more bioavailable. You also wanna be sure to eat a few egg yolks every day and eat four to six ounces of beef liver every week. Those are gonna give you really important micronutrients that your body needs to produce testosterone. So now that you know these top three testosterone boosting supplements to take, here's a video on how to naturally double or triple your testosterone levels. And it has information you're definitely gonna need. So be sure to check it out.